Positive externalities are benefits resulting from an economic activity that are enjoyed or accrue to third parties. Not the buyers, not the sellers, but third parties. Markets like education and healthcare generate positive externalities, but the problem is that if we leave things to the market mechanism, the forces of demand and supply, we won't get enough of these goods. And that's where the market failure is, because market forces will only generate so much of these goods when a larger level of output would be good for society. Um, and governments have to correct that. So let's explore this now on a graph. First of all, we have a downward sloping marginal private benefit curve. Think what this means, marginal private benefit. Remember, private benefits are the benefits enjoyed by the buyers and sellers in an economic activity. And marginal refers to how much extra benefit is enjoyed. So if I just throw some numbers on here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, understand that, let's say, the ninth unit only generates this much extra benefit. This is not a measurement of how much benefit comes from having nine units. It's the extra benefit from having the ninth unit. It's the extra benefit after having eight to have one more, nine units. And as another unit is continually consumed, it generates less extra benefit than the one before. That's why marginal ben private benefit is falling. OK, marginal private cost rises. If we leave things to market forces, people will consume up to the point where their private benefit equals their private cost. The marginal private benefit, I should say, equals the marginal private cost, and that will be the last unit that they consume. In this example, the last unit is the fifth unit. The fifth unit brings in as much private benefit as it does private cost. No one would consume the sixth unit, which brings in more cost than it does benefit. That would be irrational. And so, we call this the market generated output level. It's what we get if we leave things to market forces. However, there may be extra benefits from this good, external benefits, benefits enjoyed by third parties. These are positive externalities. And if we were to add all of those external benefits onto this graph, we would be able to plot a marginal social benefit line because private benefit plus external benefit is social benefit. So now, instead of just showing how much private benefit each unit produces, we're also adding on the external benefit. That's the entire benefit generated by each one of these goods. And let's assume that there are no extra costs, there are no external costs from this product, whatever it is. So not only is this the marginal private cost, but it is the marginal social cost as well. Now we can see that the best level for society is to consume up to the point where a good has equal marginal social cost and marginal social benefit, and that's here. Because every unit, up to that seventh unit, every unit brought in more benefit, social benefit, than it did cost. But that unit, the marginal social cost equals the marginal social benefit. No one wants the next one because it brings in more cost to society than benefit. So up to and including the seventh unit will be consumed. That is the socially optimal level. But the market has failed because the market underprovides this good. The market will only go up to where private, because private citizens and private firms only consider their private costs and benefits when they make their decision about how much to produce, how much to buy. They don't consider the external benefits. Let me give you a really good example of that. You may be watching this probably because you're a student. You're probably at university or in the final years of your school or college. And you've got plans for the future. I mean, why are you still in education? You're in education for the private benefits you're going to get out of it. You may think that you're going to get a better job if you stay in education, get a degree. You, you probably will. Statistics say that you will earn more money over your lifetime if you're a graduate than if you're a non-graduate. So you'll probably have a more fulfilling career. You'll have more control over your career. You'll be statistically less likely to end up unemployed. And so for all of these reasons, for the pleasure of what you're going to do and the pleasure of studying, 
and the enhanced income in your future life, that's the reason you're maintaining your, your education, you're staying in education. And that's laudable, that's fine, that's very good. But it's because of the private benefits. But what you may not have realised is that your staying in education benefits everybody. It benefits people you don't even know in your country. People living at the other end of your country who you don't know and you will never know. The reason is, by getting a better job, you will be paying more tax. And by paying more tax, the government receives more revenue and that will be spent on all of those other people. So they benefit from your going to university. There is that external benefit. That's why governments are prepared to subsidise higher education. And I'm going to show you how a subsidy works in a minute. Let me give you one other example, healthcare. Uh, recently there was this big swine flu fear. Now I didn't have the vaccination, I just didn't do it. But if, if you had the vaccination, you did it because you wanted to protect yourself. You did it for the private benefits. But in fact, I benefited from the fact that you had a vaccination because you, are, you, you reduced the size of the population out there from whom I might catch swine flu. By having a vaccination, I'm never going to catch, by you having the vaccination, I'm never going to get swine flu from you. So I benefited from your decision to have a swine flu jab. So you see how education and healthcare are just two examples of goods that generate external benefits. Now, but as we said before, there is market failure here because the market only generates this much, and yet the socially optimal level is this much. So how do we, how do we resolve this? Well, the, the proper way to do this is government subsidise the good that lowers the private cost. So they subsidise education or healthcare, and that lowers the, the private cost to them. And now, as people consider, should they go to university? Should they look after themselves through healthcare? Now they're weighing up a new private cost with private benefit. That's here. And this, this increases output. And that is the new market-generated level of output. And you can see that that is more, it's closer to the socially optimal level. It would take a very big uh, drop in private costs, a very big subsidy, to completely eradicate the market failure, but definitely this subsidy, which boosts output of the good by lowering its cost, has enhanced uh, the, 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 the situation. It has reduced the market failure somewhat. And I can show you that on this graph, initially, this represented the size of the market failure. Look, this was the market-generated level of output. This was the socially optimal gen, uh, level of output. And each one of the units between those two that wasn't being made, if we left it to market forces, would have brought in more social benefit than social cost. By this much, sorry, by this much falling to this much. And all of those extra benefits compared to costs were not being made. They were being lost because of the market failure. Now this much is being made, that market failure has reduced to this much. I'll try and fill that in a bit more solidly. And so this much has been improved. So the new welfare loss because of the market forces is smaller than it has, had been thanks to the subsidy. Thanks very much for watching. I've been really thrilled at all the uh, comments that I get. I can't believe it. Uh, the comments I get uh, for, for, the, for the videos. So far there's been 900,000 views of these videos. It's remarkable. And uh, thank you to everyone who's got in touch with me. Please do give me a, a, drop me a line by email. Uh, please read my blog and uh, tell me if there's any other videos I should be making. And uh, I'll do my best to, to make some more uh, soon. Okay, all the details of those addresses are coming up right now on the screen. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Oh, was that video for positive externalities okay? Do you think it was all right? Yep. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Oh, I just hate wearing that short wig with short, dark hair. <laughs> you know, it, it just hurts. And I just love to get it off and let my real hair just flow, you know, because I don't think people would take me seriously if, I, if they saw me like this. Yeah. That's why I wear that other wig. Mm. Yeah, better wearing yeah, your hair.